recording. All right, for those that are online, are you able to hear and see me okay? All right, thanks. Okay, so I'm skipping over some more of the last lecture's material, which was mostly um, partial fraction expansion. And so if we don't get time to go through all those, I'll post those as examples that you guys can work through. Um, so I wanted to move back into analyzing the full circuits so that we could kind of start maybe with this one. Um, so looking at this circuit, this is kind of breaking it down to write the first few steps. So change it into the S domain and then analyze it and get the equation still in the S domain. So go ahead and work on this problem. It is a filter. Okay. I just can't remember if it's in your lab work or not. doesn't matter. So it's only applying to the last part. Just to this one. So what does that graph look oh. like? Okay, and before zero, so it's going to be a constant six, and then it's going to something that it'll be some something that goes down like that. I don't know, like 
baby. <laughs> it goes like that. If you want to travel with your kid, but don't want to share your kid's So sorry, say that again. The So you have to find the initial conditions. Yeah. So So you use what value here? I use six volts. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So like the six volts, but then the wires or the inductors are short. So mm -hmm. six volts on both sides is that so is that zero volts, right? Mm -hmm.
All right, so for, for initial values, what do you need to do here? Okay, so what's the voltage we set here for the source? Six volts. Okay, what do we do with the... Okay, and the inductor? Okay, draw. Okay, so <coughs> then we need to know this is IL of zero minus and VC of zero minus. So VC of zero minus? Zero. Zero, IL of zero minus? Correct. So then when we move to the S domain, with zero, that means there will be no source with the capacitor. Since these are in parallel, I want to choose, I'm going to choose just the one that's in parallel with the other one. So with that, which way does this current source go? Oh, what happened to my... So the five amps goes in this direction. And then this becomes, um, what's the value for the source? Why would you use the current source instead of just doing the initial choice? Preference. <laughs> you could do either one, because just whatever your preference is with that. Since they're already in parallel, it was like, I'm going to choose the one in parallel. That's all. Correct. Okay, good translation. So um, Yes, sorry. Yeah. Five amps over S. And then, um, yes, I just haven't finished all this yet. Okay, what's this value for the capacitor? going to say 1 over 200 milli, yeah, 5 over S. And then the inductor. Okay. All right, anybody have any questions on translating this? Where's the 5 coming from for the capacitor? It's uh, normally the term is 1 over 0.2 S, but we just convert it so instead of gas we just have an Yeah. You, I, they're the same. So either way you want to write it. All right, so from here, how do people solve this? Okay. So if I pick my node voltage to be here. Yeah. What do you mean by? So there's a current source that's flowing through from one side to the other. Does that replace the current that would be found flowing through the capacitor and the inductor? Or no, it would just add on to those. Um, like we have an amp flow through the inductor at any point, it would just become six amps and whatever flows through the capacitor. So these two currents, because there's a node there, <laughs> I cannot draw an arrow. Um, those three currents are all different because it's an extraordinary node. So in that case, why would you want the extra current there? Instead of the current voltage source would be zero. The voltage source The voltage source won't be zero there. No, the voltage sources of the inductor and capacitor. So you could just in the branch of the inductor put the voltage source there. So the voltage source would be zero. 
it'd be a different way to solve. Like it would be possible, we're just doing it this way because that's what the preference is at the moment. So is the book truly the same on both sides of the test when you got the time equal zero? Yes. So at time equals zero the there. Yeah, but then zero when you, when you transfer it into the estimate? But I O. I don't know where my table went. <laughs> Let me look at it here. Um, so you need the IL is what you're looking at when you look for the inductor for either the current source or the voltage source. So the value of that would still, there'd still be a value for that voltage source it, with the inductor. So you could use this form which is fine, and just have that one branch, and then describe the current going through that with those voltages. Um, let's see. So it's going to be minus. Oops, wrong one. Okay, now that it's there, I don't know why it's showing sometimes and not. So if you had this, you could do this instead, which would be L times IL zero minus and then point to S. So you could do it that way instead, but this that branch then you'd have just one branch instead of the current source. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean like I okay. got that. Like I was just I just didn't realize that I needed the IL zero there. Yeah. Zero. Yeah, correct. Okay, so um So let's find, so writing this node voltage equation, this current here will be what? Let's just go I1. But you want to write that in terms of the VX node. So it's going to be what? This one, current will be described as? I'm going to keep this in terms of VG because that's really long. So make sure you use the whole term or 5 over S. All right, this one. And then this last one. Correct. So this will be my equation. You can then lump everything. Um, so one over one point two. This point two s. This one over point two s. And then I would divide this over to get my VX equation. I can write that as 0.2S. Easier to write. Oh, I forgot VG there. VG over. So there's my equation for Vx, which is also, note, is the same as Vo. So this is an S, S equation.
and this is kind of messy, so I would use definitely go use Wolfram um, <coughs> to be able to solve the rest of this. So there is like an inverse Laplace on Wolfram. It's just sometimes it's easy to interpret what it says, and sometimes it's not. So just be aware of that. Okay, questions? You guys feel good about these steps? Okay, any questions? Good, Kyle. Okay, let's do this one. Um, in this case, we wanna find, or basically take the inverse Laplace of the VI of T to find VI of S, and then just redraw this S domain circuit. Say that a little louder, what? So because the three volts is turned off at time equals zero, do we just not put them in the S domain and just think about it as cosine three G? So you need to use the three volts to yeah, find the initial conditions of yeah. the of the conductor, but after that when it's in the S domain, does the voltage still set it because you did the three volts or that mm -hmm. So it still does. It's three plus that, right? Because it's if I was to draw this before it's three volts, and then here it's gonna be three volts plus. Oh, oh wait, you know you're right. And then it's just this, yep, yeah, you're right, sorry. Yeah, so the three volts is only gonna affect the initial. So you don't even think about it in this Correct, yeah, sorry. You're right. All right, so initial value here. What are you going to do for the source? What value? Three volts. Thank you. And what do you do with the inductor? Uh, type the short. Correct. And then we need to find this IL going through here of zero minus. So what is IL of zero minus here? Okay. So three minus zero over one for three amps, right? Because you're taking this voltage minus this voltage, <coughs> which is ground. And then this current is gonna be the same as that current. And this current's gonna be zero, zero correct. Okay. All right, so that's our initial values. So when we redraw this, what do we do? I'm choosing this time to do a voltage source. But you could also do the current source. And be going down this direction. Was that three? Okay. Which one do you think is easier? 
Um, again, it's just preference of what looks what looks easier to you. So what will be the source value over here? So if I wanted to do you were commenting that you thought that the current source looked easier. So you could draw both and then be like, now that circuit looks much easier. <laughs> so if we were to do the current source, I'm just gonna put it here. Uh, it was three, right? Three over S. So this would be your circuit. What would your equation set look like? So that would be your, your equation. All right, any questions? Very straightforward still. Okay. This one you're going to find IL of T, so you are going to translate it back into the time domain this time. So going through all the steps for this one. So current source in this case is written as that six amps for time before zero and then six E to the minus two T after zero. Where? Oh no, the seconds. Yeah. So LC multiplied is one over 15. So to find C, you take the L value times that. That's in seconds, yeah. <laughs> I wonder you were like, wait. It's just not clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the units of that will be in seconds. So that's a unit, not, not the variable s.
Kyle, are you done? Did you finish? Did you want to see the answers? No, I've got to read the last. Okay. All right. See ya. Okay. So from here, um, I know, like, if I was to do, well, actually, sorry, back up. Initial conditions. So C value, you have to find also. So everybody finds C is 0.1076. Yes. Will got it, too. Good job, Will. Um, do you even know what a C means? Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we only solved this to the S domain. Did you solve it to the time domain? <laughs> hey, extra points. There you go. I don't have the answer for that one, but. Good practice. Yeah, good practice. So um, for this one, for initial values, what are you going to use for the source? Six. Correct. And what do you do with the capacitor? And the inductor? And so we want to find this IL of 0 minus and this VC of 0 minus. So IL of 0 minus, that one's easy. Uh, VC of 0 minus. Six minus. No, 6 over 10. So remember this is current and we're finding voltage. So we know this current is 6 amps going through there. So the voltage there will be what? If we ground this, this six node, nine. six what? Over ten. So that, so Y, yes, you're correct. Oh. B minus zero over R1. Uh -huh. And then uh, minus six is, is B over by R, so it's is equal to zero. zero. Yep, so note that you know the current in this case, which is six, is equal to V over R1. So it's gonna be 60. All right. Then from there, we wanna redraw the circuit um, for this portion. What do we use for the transform? And so you have the 6 over S plus 2, 1 over SC, and then the 60 over S. And I note from this that I'm going to have two node voltages if I continue to do this node voltage. I don't like to have two node voltages. So I'm going to take this portion and do a Thevenin because that will be really easy to change that to a Thevenin. So what that means is I disconnect it fully from the circuit. And then I'm going to replace that portion of the circuit with just one resistor. RTH and a voltage source, VTH. And then I can find those values because it's just this portion without the rest of it. So it will be open circuit, so I disconnect it fully from the circuit. I find the voltage here, VTH, ground this side. And so this just simply becomes and oh that was ugly. Uh, R one was ten. I can't remember. Yeah, ten. Okay, so this is ten. Oh, 
not that big. So this is 10. And so that voltage is, yeah, 60 over S plus 2. And then for the RTH, you open the source, and so it's simply just 10. So it's a really pretty easy way to just change this to 10 and 60 over S plus 2. And now I can write a node voltage equation for these. So this current will be anyone? Why did we put it? Yep. IL of zero minus was zero. So that's why. All right, so this current. Is what? L was at point. Six one nine six S and then this current this is five. This current's what? What's this current going through the R two? Correct? And then this current. <laughs> so you start with the node, right? Dx2. Then what do you do? Correct. You add it because the first sign you have is a minus. So you minus that and a minus. So it would be 60 over S. And then this one is a plus on that side, so this will be correct. And then you divide by all of the summation of those, so that's going to be say it a little louder. And that was point one oh seven six. And then that's the summation of all three of those currents. So then I just have that one equation to solve. Wolfram, definitely way easier than doing that by hand. So I just make sure when I do put this in Wolfram that that equation is the same. So I used x was vx and z was equal to s. So I see I have First one, which is the complicated one, x plus 60 over s minus 60 over s plus 2 divided by 10 plus 1 over 0.1076s plus x over 5 and then plus x over 0.6196s. So that gives me the result of this, this one. So I simplified those <laughs> to be z cubed plus 8 plus 17z plus 10, which looks much better. And then just factoring that, that gives me nice, nice roots to this one. So then from here, I have a over, or I have 40s over s plus 1 s plus 2, s plus 5. And that is my Vs term for Vx. And so I go back to what am I trying to solve? And in this case, I'm trying to find IL of T, which is the current going through the inductor. So how do I find that from this? So IL of S, or I'll put the capital IL of S, 
is going to just be the VX over, what was it, L again, 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6196. S. So then the S is cancel, and I end up with 40 divided by 0. 0.6196. So I figure out what that value is. And then I have S plus 1, S plus 2, S plus 5. And so you still need to do it that oh, okay. next um, to get to the time domain. So running out of time, but that would be A over S plus 1, B over S plus 2, and then C over S plus 5 is equal to that. Equal to 40 over 0. 0.6196. Yeah. Let's see. I think I have the value down here. It's 64.56. Uh, 64.56. And then from here, you can plug in the you can multiply both sides, S plus 2, S plus 1, S plus 5, get the A, B, or A1, A, B, 2, A, 3 values, and then you're going to just have simpler terms to convert it into the time domain. All right, any questions on these? I know some of you have to go, so. All right, see you guys on Monday. Make sure to work on your... Um, exam question it'll be due on Tuesday so what different types of questions do you have? Oh. So like should there be one version fraction expansion one like estimate analysis one I don't remember what I specified uh exam two there we go so uh, one problem, Laplace transform, um, where you're just, you could either change and say just redraw it in the S domain or do partial fraction expansions. Um, and then two problems with the Laplace transform for having an AC input. And then that would be the full. Individual, it's one of each of those, correct. And again, remember if you're doing individual to make sure you're commenting on other people's like specific comments. Um, so that's due Tuesday, Wednesday. Next, next Wednesday will be the test in the Ingman lab upstairs again. Uh-huh, same lab as before.